Loot boxes. We've had a lot of talk about them recently. Consumers are increasingly dissatisfied. Governments are becoming increasingly interested. Hope for industry self-regulation had faded. Until now. But that begs a question. Is what we're about to see today far enough? Indeed, is it just going to end up swapping us from one form of loot box over to another? Hey everyone and welcome back to another report. We've got a major update within the realm of loot boxes, as we've not only seen Epic Games take action, but we've also seen the ESA, a major games industry body in the USA, take a bit of action too. This is a major update as that does include both platform holders and publishers, with the changes inching us further and further away from a purely random unknown loot box hell the one in which we often currently live. But to be clear, this is not going to go far enough to make most people happy. First though, YouTube changes have de-emphasized independent news sources like ourselves, seems to be hitting us, and it seems like they're emphasizing subscribers and bell ringing, as evidenced by this new bar they've just started showing creators, and your support over the last few days has already increased that number quite a bit, which we're very thankful of, so be sure to click that and help us out, and uh, yeah, thank you for staying with us. Okay, there are two angles to cover in today's video the Epic Games one and the ESA one, and we're going to start off with the ESA. So, the ESA have said that the major platform holders, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, have all made a commitment to work together on loot box policies. Now, this shows that even they are beginning to get concerned about where the industry is going in that regard. At a recent Federal Trade Commission talk, the ESA's Chief Counsel on Technology Policy, Michael Warnack, talked about the ESA's past efforts to label games with microtransactions and to implement platform-level spending controls, but here is the really important quote. That said, we are doing more. I am pleased to announce this morning that Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony have indicated to ESA a commitment to new platform policies with respect to the use of paid loot boxes in games that are developed for their platform. Specifically, this would apply to new games and game updates that add loot box features, and it would require the disclosure of relative rarity or probabilities of obtaining randomized virtual items in games that are already available on their platforms. As well, many of the leading video game publishers of the Entertainment Software Association have decided that they are going to implement a similar approach at the publisher level to provide consumers this information and give them enhanced information to make purchase decisions. Okay, that was all a little bit wordy. What do we see here? Well, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo have all committed to new uh, policies that will require publishers to disclose loot box odds, probabilities, rarities on the store. Fronts. Now, this is something that a number of games do presently do, um, as do any games in China that feature loot boxes. You see, over in China, it's a legal requirement to disclose the um, the box odds. Gambling is very much a no-no in the eyes of the party over there. Now, while the ESA doing this would not be a legally binding thing, well, if it becomes platform policy on the Switch, Xbox Store, and PlayStation Store, then since most games are cross-platform, that would pretty much kill undisclosed loot box odds as a thing in the industry. Who this impact the most? Well, that's kind of a strange one. You see, games have already started to disclose their odds a lot more often. As an example, in FIFA Ultimate Team, those card packs, they disclose odds, and that clearly is not enough to put a dent in their financial performance. Blizzard Entertainment's games, however, are a very clear offender, with Hearthstone and Overwatch only disclosing their odds in China, I believe, and we don't really know if they're different in the West uh, to what they are in China. Now, these ESA changes would not impact Hearthstone, I believe, but they would impact the console versions of Overwatch. And then when we're on the topic of Activision Blizzard, well, there's Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As we covered in another video very recently, they completely doubled down on its loot box mechanics as of late, so uh, I suppose that would be a pretty relevant an update for that game. So overall, right, this is a bit of an improvement. It is a bit of industry self-regulation, but I doubt it will make that many people happy. After all, casino games and slots all do tend to disclose their, um, you know, like their, their pay rates. So I, you know, I don't think that really dissuades people from compulsively pulling the slots that much. Now, sure, loot boxes are not gambling according to United States and United Kingdom gambling laws, but we do know that the loot boxes pretty much do prey on the same psychological trigger 
figures, so they may as well be gambling. Sure, the state does not see a virtual football player as having value, but the players of those games certainly do. The ESA statement also talks of publishers, just a refresh, they said this, many of the leading video game publishers of the ESA have decided they are going to implement a similar approach on the publisher level to provide consumers this information and give them enhanced information when making purchase decisions. Now, this statement leads us, oddly enough, over to Epic Games. So we know the publishers are doing what we, um, you know, just talked about with dis uh, disclosing the odds. However, Epic have pretty much changed their loot box approach entirely. Epic Games changed the loot box mechanics of Fortnite Save the World a few months back. So previously, it was just your standard loot box, right? You could just bulk buy 50 of them, whatever, go through a whole bunch of money. The new version is quite different. It entirely removes the ability to bulk purchase loot boxes. The new system instead shows you what will be inside a loot box before you purchase it. That means that it is literally impossible for a consumer to spend money in the game without knowing exactly what they are going to get in return. So fundamentally, I think that is a good idea. I think it is better. I think it's a step forward. This type of loot box is not gambling by pretty much any definition from like a legal perspective, as there is never chance connected to what you get for your purchase. That said, there still is a business angle to this that I really think we should talk about. So you always know what's going to be in a loot box in Fortnite Save the World before you purchase it. So you know, what if you see the preview, don't want what's in the loot box, and then never purchase a loot box again? Does it work like that? No, it doesn't. The loot box, if you don't purchase it, will refresh on a daily basis and have like a different set of items in it. So, on day one, you log in, you don't like the loot box, okay, on day two, you log in, the loot box has new content. So, you purchase that loot box, and then the game will give you, you know, the next loot box, it'll give you a preview of that. And if you, like, choose to purchase the second one, the same process happens again. Now, say you don't like what's in the third loot box, don't worry, wait another day, it will reset its contents, and, uh, you know, it might be different the next day. As you can see here, there is zero way the consumer will not know exactly what they are purchasing, because you cannot bulk purchase, you can only buy them one at a time. Now, this system, and this is the bit of news here, this system has been rolled out into Rocket League. Now, Epic Games acquired the Rocket League developer a few months ago, and that pretty much means that this appears to be Epic Games' preferred way of doing loot boxes in their titles. I think there's pretty much zero way that you could directly call it gambling because your purchase isn't tied to randomness, but there is another business angle to this style of loot box, one that could be informed by the extreme success that Epic have had with Fortnite's business model. So, Fortnite is the most successful example of a daily rotating store in gaming. So, over the days and the weeks, the way that that store changes over time means that they constantly give engaged users a reason to check in on the store. And that's clearly something that's working out very well indeed for Epic's bottom line. Now, here's the thing with a traditional loot box. You don't do that. A loot box is a loot box. It has its odds. It has its loot pool. There's never a reason for a user to check in with loot boxes day in, day out. If a user doesn't engage with loot boxes, that's that. They don't engage. Well, this new form of loot box that Epic is building with Fortnite Save the World and Rocket League, that kind of turns the loot box into a daily rotating store because purchase a loot box, and, uh, well, you'll be able to get the hit of finding out what the next loot box contains, even without buying it. That will be, uh, you know, air quotes, exciting. Then, since they refresh every day, that will always give every user a reason to check back with the loot boxes on a daily basis. Now, I do want to be clear here, that's just good sales tactics within a free-to-play game. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of psychological, uh, you know, gaming the people there. Fundamentally, it does not have the nastiness of loot boxes and the literal sort of gambling stuff that they're tied to from a psychological perspective, as you're always going to know exactly what the money is getting you, but still, it is interesting to see how they've pretty much tr uh, changed the loot box concept into a daily rotating store. And I've got to admit, it's a smart way to, from their perspective, turn lemons into lemonade. Although that said, I've got to wonder if this daily rotating store type of loot box will actually get more people buying. I've got to wonder if this will lead to more people purchasing a few, you know, small number of loot boxes, rather than the business model being entirely reliant on whales bulk purchasing like tens or hundreds of the darn things. Now, Epic don't report their quarterly earnings because they're a privately held company, but if we see EA or Activision Blizzard move over to this type of model, well, it could tell you one of two things, or maybe a bit of both. Either A, that they are responding to the increased scrutiny by governments by removing the sort of overtly gambling-like aspects or gambling aspects of loot boxes, 
Or B, that this business model, actually by consistently engaging all users, is more effective and generates more revenue. I mean, you'd probably have the whales overspending and then just have your average user spending more anyway. And by the way, when I say whale, I know that's a harsh dehumanizing term. I know it's a nasty one, but I use it for a reason. It's the term the industry uses, and I use it to highlight just how uncomfortable the practice is and the dehumanizing sort of aspects of that word. Now, if this new way of doing loot boxes becomes default, well, at least the aspect of having direct randomness be tied into your purchase, that would be gone. You could, I suppose, argue that part of the value of purchase A is seeing the content of potential purchase B. That undoubtedly is going to incentivize some people to purchase, and it could lead to gambling-like patterns of behavior, as people may constantly pull the lever in order to find out what is next. So overall, I think this is still going to make a bunch of money. I don't think it's gambling in the same way that pure random loot boxes are, but I do think that, uh, you know, there are strong psychological factors that are at work here, and for a lot of people, too much of that is just seen as a bad thing. Even, say, using FOMO, fear of missing out, like time-limited deals, to a lot of people, that even still rings a little bit like, ugh. So there's still going to be pushback to this, but I guess it is fundamentally different from the traditional loot box thing. However, I do want to end this video on a bit of futility. Yeah, how nice of me. So the ESA talked about the platform level spending restrictions that exist, and that is true. If you have an iPhone, a, you know, an Android phone, or you're using Origin or like Microsoft or Sony, you can set spending limits. And here's the interesting thing. It means that technically speaking, a parent who knows what their child is doing can prevent their child from doing these loot boxes, basically from doing in-app purchases whatsoever. A clued in parent can do that. They've been able to do that for quite some time indeed. Yet we keep on getting these stories in the BBC, you know, oh, my son emptied my bank account. In almost every one of those cases, that is the parent being disengaged with what their child is doing. That is the parent not learning about the platforms their child is spending time on. It is irresponsible parenting. I'm going to out, I'm just going to call it that. Those things are avoidable problems. And one just has to wonder like those spending restrictions exist. Parents don't use them. How, you know, to like how much can you pressure the games industry for um, some of this stuff if they have actually implemented the spending restrictions, but parents are just not bothering to use them and not bothering to learn about them. Maybe the industry has to do a better job of communicating that, of educating parents, but it certainly does seem like a strange thing right now where technically speaking, a lot of correct things have been done with those spending restrictions, but parents are just literally not using the tools at their disposal and are then complaining whenever problems happen, even though they had the power to stop it all along. But anyway, that's just the topic that I think is interesting. I'd love to know what you have to say, so let me know down below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.